Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, abandoned milling machines and about my machine, a VHF3 from 83. Uh, the first uh, abandoned milling machines were made in 1942. Uh, they were uh, abandoned VHF2B. Uh, 1826 of these were made uh, and the last one was made in uh, 1976. However, there was also another model made, uh, the VHF-3. And they started making VHF-3s in uh, 1956. And they kept on making them like this one with a manual gearbox until 1983. And also in 1983 they started making them with an infinitely variable uh, gearbox. Uh, and kept making them uh, for some more years. I don't know how many years, but uh, anyway, these Abena mills uh, sometimes has people scratching their heads because of the sloping way. As you can see, it has a sloping way down here, which is actually very clever, as we shall see later. As I said, there was two similar models uh, made, uh, the VHF-2B, that only has x-axis travel table feed and the VHF3 which has a three-axis table feed. Uh, the table is also wider on the VHF3, it's a 1200 millimeters table, whereas on the uh, VHF2B it's only 1050 millimeters. Uh, they made all in all 1826 of the VHF2Bs and they made 3,173 of the VHF-3s and then uh, in 83 they started making the VHF-3M which has an infinitely variable table feed and I don't know how many they made of these. These machines have a 12 speed gearbox and this is where you set uh, your uh, spindle speed. Uh, the most common by far is from 44 to 2000 RPMs. Uh, I've seen slower ones with uh, a maximum of 1300 RPMs. I've also seen a faster version. I uh, don't remember how fast, but as I said, the most common uh, model by far is 44 to 2000 RPMs. Uh, the early machines had uh, three levers up here, uh, but the later machines have these concentric. Uh, things and these are numbered so for example to get 311 I set the first one to 3 the second one to 1 and the third one to 1 by just twisting them around like this. On these abandoned machines you can move uh, your milling head this way you cannot move it this way which is the most common for milling machines but moving it this way is actually uh, quite handy uh, as you can see, it has four screws that keep it in place and it also has a plunger here that goes into a hole which saves you from the problem of tramming the head every time you move it. So, if I want to move the head now, I have to undo the bolts here. Then I pull out the plunger here, it's a bit tight so I'll just pull it out and then I can swing the head like so and then I can position this head any way I want it. So if I want to have, have it at an angle I can put it like this, just lock it down with the screws and there you go. But the most common, if, of course, is to have it vertically or horizontally. And we'll put it in horizontal mode now, so I'll just bring it down and then put the plunger into the hole here. There you go. Now it's completely horizontal. And I'll tighten the screws. So. We've moved the head into the horizontal position and now we're milling into thin air, which is completely useless, of course. But as you can see, we moved the spindle from a position here to a position here, which is up and out. 
So in order to use the mill now, we have to move it back and we have to move it down, like in a direction like so. And this is why we have the sloping way on the machine. In order to start uh, horizontal milling, uh, we're going to crank this upper part of the machine down. So I'll have to undo these four bolts. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to crank the lever down here. As you can see, uh, the milling head fits in with the screw here to the lower part of the machine and by tightening this you make it more rigid for horizontal milling. I like to use the mill in this configuration. Uh, of course I can put an ER collet chuck in here and use uh, end mills but I also like to put a shell mill like this one in here with the carbide inserts and then I mill the edges of things by putting them on blocks like this, toe clamping them, and then I mill the edge from this side. This horizontal milling position is also used for a horizontal milling arbors such as these. These are available in 16, uh, 22, 27, 32 and 40 millimeters, uh, although 40 millimeter is a bit big for this machine. And uh, this is basically a shaft with a keyway and you use a piece of keystock. Then you have spacers such as these and at the far end you use a bearing race that I'll show you later. And you can of course use one mill on this, like so, but you can also use several at once. For example, if you want to make parallel slots, you can put spacers in between. Uh, you have different spacers like these are thinner ones. These are even thinner ones like shims. So you get the exactly right distance between these and then like so you can mill parallel slots and when you set up as many as you like you just fill up the shaft with spacers and let's see here And then at the end you put your uh, bearing race and then the nut obviously. Okay, nice and tight. And I'm gonna put this into the taper and tighten it with the drawbar here. As you can see now, this is just out in thin air, which it's obviously not supposed to be, so we're gonna uh, give it some support out here. And now I'm gonna pull out the arbor support, so I'll start with loosening these two bolts. Then I'll push this bar out, like so, and I'll just temporarily clamp this up and now I'm going to move the support which is this one <clears throat> slides off like this <clears throat>
and I'm going to push this bar out, clamp it tightly. And now this is the support. This is usually stored like this because it has oil in it and as soon as you turn it uh, down like this the oil will start seeping down into the bearing to lubricate the race so if you just leave it in this position your oil will eventually be on the floor but I'm gonna put this on here and this slides onto the bearing race like so and then you clamp this one Now we have this all set up for horizontal milling. Uh, this support is turned down, which means the oil inside it starts to seeping down through a piece of felt into the bearing. You can adjust the bearing by the means of two nuts here, because this has a cone-shaped bronze bushing that is pushed in and out. So you can adjust the play here, and you want just the right amount of play. If it's too tight, it might seize, and if it's too loose, it's not stable, obviously. So now you can start milling like so and just start feeding and there you go. The motor for the spindle is in the top part of the casting here and it drives the uh, gearbox by means of a belt. I'm gonna show you that. Okay, so here's the belt that goes from the motor here and up and into the gearbox. I removed the screws here so I can open the lid and I can give you a look of the gearbox. I shift some gears here. This is how they move down here. I put the mill back into the horizontal position and now I'm going to show you uh, the table feed. And uh, the table feed motor is in the lower part of the machine here. And here's also the 12 speed uh, gearbox for the table feed and the table is fed through this which is a telescopic shaft that goes to the table I'll show you uh, table feed rates are set with this crank here and uh, the black ones are for the horizontal feeds. They range from uh, 26 millimeters per minute to 1200 millimeters per minute. And the red ones are for the, the vertical feed and it feeds from uh, 13 millimeters per minute to 600 millimeters per minute. Here we have uh, a lot of electrical connections and fuses and stuff like that inside here. And in the back there is the third motor of the machine, that's a coolant pump and it pumps coolant up through this tube and I haven't used that one yet because I think the pump needs some tender loving care before it's up and running but the machine has one so all in all uh, three motors. These are the buttons I pressed to get the machine running. Uh, this is uh, spindle clockwise, spindle counterclockwise. This engages the uh, power feed. This one uh, engages the rapid feed and this one stops all the motors. So for example, starting here, now the, rap now the table feed is moving and this stops the table feed, starts the table feed and for example, if I want to move the table now, I press this and I'll go into rapid feed. And that, and that stops everything. This machine also has a one-shot lubrication system, so uh, I fill oil into this, which is an oil cap, and before I start using the machine, I pull this one out, like so, and then as it sinks down, a pump presses oil into the waste, so the oil goes through this here tube, and it goes into the uh, knee, and uh, it sends oil out into all the ways. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short introduction to uh, the Abena mills. Uh, if you're interested in having one for yourself, you can probably find a VHF uh, 2B 
pretty cheap. Um, a VHF-3 will be more expensive, of course. Uh, and if you really want to spend, you can get the VHF-3BS, which has a quill. Uh, they're pretty rare and they're quite expensive, uh, but still you can get them. Uh, the Abena mills uh, are very uh, common in Sweden. All machine dealers have them in stock usually. Uh, Abena has made a lot of them for export also, so I know there's Abena mills available, for example, in the United States as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed uh, this film and hope you'll be back and see you later.